Hello and welcome back to XCOM 2, War of the Chosen. My name is Saiken and today we're continuing our exquisite timing Legendary Iron Man Permanent a Dark Events uh, Challenge, which we unfortunately already um, have failed because we were not able to um, complete the entirety of the campaign by July 15th. However, we're pretty damn close. All things considered, uh, normally this challenge is done on Commander, as you know, uh, so we cope with four times the building times and twice the uh, times for all of the research. Anyways, uh, that's water under the bridge. Let's uh, take a look at our um, task today. We're going to uh, play Operation Winter Hand, which is hacking a workstation for a potential scientist just to squeeze out a little bit more um, research time in the last uh, probably two to four weeks uh, that uh, this campaign will last. And all we got to do is hack an advent um, workstation and be done with it. 13 enemies, including specters, heavy lancer, uh, advanced purifiers, at once troopers, that's pretty bad. Uh, mutants, that's bad as well. Uh, shield bearers um, and advanced priests. So we have seen quite an uptick in the quality of enemies that we're facing. And that's a good reminder the ne uh, for the next time that I'm trying this challenge, that around the time of July 15th, we're actually fighting against a lot of enemies where you could make an argument uh, that magnetic weapons would be uh, more helpful than having additional um, armor. Gotta look into that. Uh, maybe um, I'm trying the magnetic weapon route the next time. Anyways, um, off to the mission and let's uh, start finding a team. All right, here we go again. So that's the best team I could muster for uh, for the mission. We're taking all of the available uh, soldiers, Mystic, uh, Corporal, no, no name Corporal, Ranger, uh, Vapor and Boss into the run. And I took uh, the liberty to um, sell some items and recruit two new rookies. Roby was available as well as Sonar, although they look incredibly cool and um, were uh, part of many, many successful runs. They start as rookies here, so all they have is um, a couple of assault rifles uh, with a stock in this case and uh, with a scope plus repeater in his case. And um, yeah, a few grenades to essentially provide shredding if possible and not immediately die. Uh, that's really it. We are fighting against 13 enemies, which is quite a mouthful. I'm not sure if we will have the damage uh, to, to take down the entire mission. So um, in time, so the tactic will really be to um, get as close to the hacking uh, terminal as possible and then hopefully get the hack done so that we're um, not going to suffer um, longer. Once the timer is um, off and we no longer need to worry about that, I think we're going to be fine. All right, here we go. We landed. It's time to hack that workstation. Let's start with moving our sniper. She has a grappling hook. Could position her up here. Or we're going down here and essentially trying to grapple up. I think I'll take the high ground for now, just in case we're running into nasty surprises. Next up, Mystic takes an absolute frontline position. There's the first patrol, Spectre plus Advanced uh, Shield Bearer. That's a pretty nasty patrol. Vapor will take a frontline position as well. We need our specialist to be really close to the objective. Now what are we going to do with the rest? Um, Let's move our ranger over here. And our rookies can take an aggressive position down here. 
Good. So far so good. Took an aggressive first turn. We got seven turns to go. Let's see what we're up against. This patrol could turn out to be nasty. Ah, even worse. Got an advanced advent priest and an advanced trooper. The extra hit points really start coming in, pro uh, becoming problematic here. He's also blocking the ladder, like a smarty pants. Yeah, we're going to trigger two packs. Am I willing to do that? The answer is probably yes. Uh, the most clever way of dealing with those guys, though, is do we have a conventional grenade. I packed everything but a conventional grenade. Well done. Yeah, we really do not have a conventional grenade. If we had one, could explode this and let them drop to the ground. Maybe a good idea to not do it. We're not starting with a grenade though, and by not starting with a grenade, we also don't have run and gun on our ranger yet. That's too bad. I wanted to move here and start with the ranger. Fortunately, that seems to be not possible. So who's the most important target for now? Spectre definitely is pretty nasty. Shield bearer can be nasty. But I think for now we're going to focus on this pack here. Going classical, uh, classical with the Advent Trooper first. And this will now finally trigger both of the packs. There is another pack down here. Yep, there you see uh, you see it, an Advent Priest. And a Purifier. Good, so what's the plan? I think we don't want to trigger the other pack. What we want to do is definitely hitting the Advent Shield Bearer though. Moving into a somewhat solid cover without triggering anything. And can we hit him? Oh, come on. Can I squeeze out just one more tile, please? No, that didn't work out. Okay, we still got the grenade for later use. For now, let us think how we can get this pack down. Uh, moving up to finish the Advent Trooper. There you go, that's one down. Still have a Mimic Beacon. If I was to move in here, we would trigger that pack. Could move all the way to here. Not the worst decision, <coughs> but we'll probably also trigger an advent pack. I 
Also, by moving here, I'm probably going to trigger this pack. Could position myself down here. But that might be a suboptimal position as well. This here would be nice in terms of flanking. We'll probably need to use the Mimic Beacon. And we're back to the disadvantage of melee. We gotta go in in order to make something happen. <coughs> Could start uh, softening him up and probably not trigger anything. Plus get on parry, uh, uh, get uh, to start using parry. This here will be most likely a mind control. Although standing in the open and offering a flank is never a great idea. However, if we're using a Mimic Beacon, that shouldn't be a problem. And I've already decided that we're going to use a Mimic Beacon. So let's do all of the movement first, and then we're taking shots. This here is the safest move to not trigger anything. Just barely out of range of triggering something. Let's continue. Oh, that was bad. We gotta move away, elsewise we're taking damage, so no parry here. Gotta take a movement to here. With all of his armor, he's probably not even going to take any real damage with that flanking shot. Are we rather going for 50-50? I mean, there's only a 40% a chance for critical hit. Three armor just will mitigate most of the damage. I'd rather take the 50-50. Also, there is the chance that there would have been the chance that we explode the car. Moving up so that we can engage next turn and let's use a mimic beacon here. Big problem for us will be simply the um, timer. We're not dealing enough damage. All right, that's perfect. He just started shredding himself. Perfect. <clears throat> Mimic Beacon. Did his job. Good. Let's try to get as much damage out of uh, this as possible. And what I want to do is already start moving up a tiny bit. <clears throat> All right, the sword attack will deal more damage uh, than the shotgun. Wait a second, not necessarily. Let's validate that theory. We do have tail and rounds. 
So there's a pretty high chance that we're getting some uh, crit, which means in return that'll be plus one point of damage, so almost as much, and then it will be mult multiplied with crit, so yeah, we're going to take a shot. Gotta hate it when they are dodging. <laughs> you must be kidding me. All right. Um, let's make sure Mystic here. Starts collecting uh, charges. There we go. That's focus plus one. Lovely. Reload and let's start peppering. Well, even a missed shot is good in this case. I was pretty certain that we would be able to kill it. Unfortunately, I was proven wrong. Let's kill the Spectre. Of course, minimum damage. Things are not working um, in our favor. They certainly are not. All right, that's not a problem. <clears throat> we can handle it. Now the mind control or stasis. Or the game just decides to freeze. What is happening? And we are back. Not sure what exactly happened, but uh, the bad news is, unfortunately, the game completely froze um, and started to shut down by itself, um, which in return triggered the status of the uh, beginning of uh, that last turn. So I do not fully recall all of the movements uh, that I did. I must certainly try to replicate them. This time accounting for some bullshittery. So we're moving over here and over here. Sonar, I think, had taken the shot um, to him. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure. This is definitely not how it went down the last time. I think I did the lightning hands short first. I think I did the lightning hand short first. Well, it's going to be a turn that is close, but not completely equivalent to what you've seen beforehand. Right, I'll go. 
Move in a little bit back here. Still trying to hit this guy, unfortunately does not work out. Ninety percent versus only seventy percent. So I guess what we're going to do is we're really going to use the acid grenade this time. And yes, we are being flanked by the last remaining um, enemy. However, at the same time, that enemy will most likely use one of his psi abilities. And we're using parry. He has a target rich environment if he wants to take a shot. He decides to mind control instead, which is fine. He'll take four points. Oh no, he, uh, on a successful mind control, he does not take the damage. Good. Let's kill the priest. And we're triggering, of course, another pack. Down to four turns, which is not much, specifically since I need to get there relatively fast. All right, first things first, Vapor. Vapor really needs to move. But at the same time, he also um, needs, to, uh, needs to take a couple of shots. We can't afford to not use everyone in the combat at this point. That's pretty damn good. With a not so negative uh, feedback. A global flashbang is quite helpful. Uh, that's still a good chance to hit uh, the stun lancer. Understood. Moving out. We are starting to move more and more aggressively in. Can't reach him fully, so let's take the 50-50s. Okay. Clearly didn't work out as expected. We're taking full cover. And there's a priest down there. Good hit to soften him up. Half cover and high ground. And that's... Whom are we going to hit? Like, he has an advanced stock, which means two points against the priest, uh, two points of damage against the priest, if we wanted to use him. And I would probably say we're going to use the second Mimic Beak in this turn. Wait a second, let's think about that before we go down that route. Um... We killed the initial two packs, which is four enemies down. That's another three, so that's seven. We're definitely up against 13. We can't afford to use the Mimic Beacon yet. We haven't killed enough. No, I'm sorry. That 
That's a great hit. Like it. We could deal one more damage against the stun lancer. Or we're taking two damage against the priest. I think we're taking the two damage against the priest because he doesn't have armor. I'm calculating the minimum damage that uh, we would um, deal with the advanced stock. There is an overwatch in case this priest starts to move. We can kill him. Stasis is not the end of the world. Stasis might provide a feedback. Not sure. Nope. Does not. Alright, there's the parry. And this is a mind control. Stasis, another stasis. Alright. Very unfortunate because now we're losing two actions in the next round. Time for a new position. One that offers us a bit of a better angle. There we go. And let's kill the priest. Perfect. The rookies can continue to fall back to here. Have been priest down there. He's getting a bit more than he bargained for. Let's kill the heavy lancer and see if this triggers another pack. Well, super heavy turrets, so uh, it's not a great start. We could go into full cover mode uh, right over here. That would mean we're out of their line of sight. The other option for us is to position ourselves to here, getting ever so close to the actual target. We don't want to uh, be in the range of the turrets, that's for sure. And we only have three more turns, so I need a way to get closer. Let's start with movement. That'll be out of line of sight. And if we can help it, we should get our um, specialist in range. So this here is a position where he will not take any shots from the turrets and takes full cover. Only the purifier is left over. Luckily, a target that has a really poor aim. That, on the other hand, is bad news for us. How do we deal with the turrets?
we could start essentially move to here but that would mean we're for sure going to take an attack um, and the turrets will start hitting us let's first of all move to here So there's one turret. How do we deal with them? I've, I would have never guessed that turrets are going to be a problem of ours. I'm ready. Reloading so that we theoretically can take sniper shots. And we need to spread out just a tiny bit. Yeah, we got to deal with the purifier as well. Can't let him continue to harass us like that. Do we have an option to shred? Yes, we do. Do we really want to shred any of the towers? No, we do not. We just gotta circumvent them for now. There's still a mech, um, I know that. But the only shredding grenade that we do have is the incendiary grenade, and although it doesn't deal any damage to him, it would theoretically shred him. Yeah, let's try it. <clears throat> it should shred him. There we go, and it even the initial explosion deals damage to him. Should have um, thought about that. Moving a tiny bit over here. Did we just hit him for seven points of damage? That is awesome. Yeah, we don't want to stand in the open against the tower. Mm -mm. It's not happening. I also don't want to stand next to an explosion. So what we're going to do is we're just taking our time to move over here. Question is, is it a good time for a Mimic Beacon? Or are we simply going to move in? Time to hit the tower and it shuts down. That's great. Shut down for two rounds means it cannot take any shots. Shouldn't have moved yet. I should have taken a shot. This position here will prevent us from being hit. Overwatch and parry so that the other tower will will just continue shooting at us. Reinforcements. Is that an advanced mech? Holy shit. Holy moly. Three armor, twenty hit, twenty one hit points. Adjusting aim. This has just become so, so, so much more difficult. Will only hold so long. 
Well, well, well. We are in a difficult spot, difficult spot to say the least. Enemies from all around. How are we going to deal with that? First things first. Gotta take this pretty aggressive move. Unfortunately, he also has the Mimic Beacon. Mm. Still gotta take this move, elsewise the entire mission is lost. And I gotta hack the workstation just so that we can stay in the combat. Enemy protocol is perfect. But like so many other things in this run, it's a dream to get it. Good. Now that that has been taken care of, Let's just deal with the obvious problems first. Confirmed. Full cover. Into a flanking position, into a kill. Got a nice fat promotion out of it. Need to reload with Roby. And... Well, I'll leave him there. Maybe we can overwatch at a bit later time. Immediately asking myself the question whether or not I should go close up and use two pistol shots. That's probably a good idea. Hmm. Well, we would, we would still, we would still have a problem. All right, sorry, got distracted real quick. So we could move to here. That would solve our problem with the stun lancer. But both a heavy mech. And. And the ad, uh, Advent Officer could take a shot at us. Charging in here, not the best idea either. I think we're still going for this play here. As we gotta deal with the um, Stun Lancer sooner or later. Okay, so far so good. Moving to here. It's almost too good to pass because six points of damage. This um, truck might explode and deal another point, uh, another hefty amount of damage. Lightning hands, maybe it crits. Let's see. Am I gambling? Am I going to think that he takes two points of burning damage? Is that what we're trying to do? No, it's not what we're trying to do. Very nice. I like the option to take an explosion. But today is not the day to gamble. Roby takes an overwatch 
And now how do we deal with the towers? The towers can't hit anyone at this point. Except, of course, for our uh, for our Templar, who is going to sprint into a position where the towers cannot see him anymore. Very nice hit, plus disorientation. And I'll go for parry maneuver, because the mech can anyways flank two people on top of the roof. That's good. Uh, wasted his um, action. That is not good. That's going to be ro uh, rockets. And rockets are hurting us quite badly, so... Not 100% sure how we even got into a situation where he's now burning, but I guess it is what it is. Thanks to healing protocol. We can heal both of them. Great. I could see myself going here if it wasn't for the towers. Problem is that this massive mech up there makes it incredibly difficult to do anything but but sitting around like a little schoolgirl. Time to kill the officer. Thanks to tail and rounds that worked out quite well. Well and now it's time to deal with the mech. Moving over here, there is still a chance for a repeater. Unlikely. We can't continue to sit down there. That's like being a sitting duck. Instead, let's take full cover right over here and use our pistol shot. It's not doing much, but we're starting to chip it, uh, chip away at it. Can't move into the open. That's a problem. Yeah, we got a overwatch and that's about it. And now finally, the person who is hopefully going to deal with the max. Moving in. Starting to damage it. And let's do a parry. Ouch. That was a shot into full cover, and that's probably a kill. Shot wide. He fell onto his head, which caused him to take another two points of damage. Wow. Got the Mimic Beacon still, and I'm very willing to use it uh, this turn, if needed. Let's continue peppering the mech. It's not taking a lot of damage, that's for sure. Good. Reload.
Rookies are starting to take a couple of hits here. Good, this will get us out of tower range. Nice little critical hit. And this should be a kill. Wow. Okay, so how about we're moving to here, which should be again slightly out of range. One reload, and we should be fine with the towers. I was just about to say, towers alone are not keeping a mission up if only towers are left. It normally means that the mission is about to end. So how do we want to deal with this? Um, yeah, I can't really be that aggressive. What we can do is we can certainly shoot the sectoid. Ready to engage. All right, reload plus overwatch. We're positioning ourselves over here, which is a spot where there are no enemies that can see us. Taking a bit more aggressive position with our rookies. And finally, Vapor. Moves up to here. No tower should be able to see her. Uh, him, sorry. And the sector is almost dead. This is going to be a teleport plus psionic bomb. There we go. Two weapon disablements means uh, it is taking eight points of damage. In return, begins to clone itself. Of course. So how about how about we're using ah we can't use um, the advanced stock because we don't have ammunition that is too bad we can move out of the psionic bomb though and start reloading. Sector is dead. The Codex is uh, likely to uh, to die as well. Sector is burning. That's why it is already dead. Moving a tiny bit closer so I can see the tower.
moving out of uh, the psionic bomb. Another reload. And we're taking a full cover position over here. Killing the remaining codex and... There's the Overwatch plus. Let's jump down here. So we're out of range. Sector just died. Theoretically, the mission should be over when there are only towers left. Nice critical hit. Lovely. And that's the reason why the mission was not over. Okay, lucky. Uh, luckily we still have a Mimic Beacon. Grappling all the way over there for a bit of a better shooting position. And let's finish the tower. Ah, I should have used lightning hands. That was greedy. That was greedy. Alright, this will be a 100% kill for the tower. There we go. Even if he would have missed, it would have been one point of damage. Moving further up with our rookies. And we're still in a pretty long drawn out fight. Holy cows. There is the Mimic Beacon. And let's try to just eliminate the tower. Perfect, that worked like a charm. We are parrying up here, just in case one of them decides to come a bit closer. And they certainly come closer. Yep, that could be the parry that we were looking for. Good job. Good job. Well, now we do have a problem. Houston, we have a massive problem. Let's start with the mutants. Nice hit. A crit of 10 is fantastic. Fantastic. Um, Flashbang wouldn't be bad either. Wouldn't be bad either. This here is a prime position for eating another grenade. What are we going to do about this? Hmm.
Well, for one, we can start to heal. Biggest problem is the mutants are very resistant against melee attacks, almost immune. Their retaliation is just a pain in the ass to deal with. Lightning hands. Get off one more shot. And this mutant here would take some more damage. With being flanked. Fortunately not as much as I wish it would take. Yeah, the mutants are the prime target. And although I could... Um, now go and uh, and start flashbanging all of them. You know what? Maybe that's the right play. Can I hit all three? I could hit both of them, which wouldn't be the worst. Flashbanged um, mutants means that they will not be able to just charge in and use their melee attacks. So that's not bad. I think that's the right play. We just need to buy more time. This will result in another psionic bomb. Hitting three, no, two this time. Three. Three means 12 points of damage, almost killing itself. Ouch. Well, that is bad. I wasn't aware that they could just completely remove the cover. Let's first of all remove the overwatch, which we can do by reloading plus taking a shot. Next up, let's move into a better position. Mystic can move up. And if he was to use Volt, it'll probably kill either of them. That's good. It's a good start. Moving out of the area, reloading. Let's take a shot. Good. One further, uh, one of them further down. No, definitely not a melee attack. Not against the mutant. Instead, we're vaulting him. hoping that we would deal enough damage which we are not hence let's move up kill the last straggler 
And we're going to take a shot or a melee attack. Melee attack it is. And that's the end of the mission. <sighs> Such a slugfest again. I love it. Killed almost 20 enemies with absolute garbage weapons. And there we are. Yep, couple of bravely wounded, 35 days, which becomes the new standard. Um, no surprise, the rookies did incredibly well. Got ourselves two specialists right here. And we finally got a promotion. Holy shit, he even has a Reaper. That is awesome. <coughs> Face off isn't bad either. Pretty good abilities. I'm even seriously considering Reaper. But we're probably going with Overcharge for now. And with Amplify, because that'll help us dealing with super heavy targets. Boss, on the other hand, takes quick draw. And we got ourselves a Scientist, which in return gives us more research speed. It seems as if the game is now becoming really, really difficult. The last few missions were quite a slog, and you see that we're taking more and more hits. There's only so much I can do. We've made initial contact. And there is the initial contact, which means our next mission is going to be a storyline mission, guys. Uh, that's uh, That brings us to the end of today's episode. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the content, please let me know what you think about it. Leave a comment down below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done so. See you in the next run. Bye-bye.